causes the creature to snap furiously at others. And that's how it's transmitted to the next one is, and I've always wondered, what is the creature thinking? Who's, who's actually in charge? And I, you know, we hear historical accounts of people getting gold fever or think about how much people, how, how many people have killed other people to, to serve, to find oil. And I, you know, in private conversations, you've said you're going to convert me to this way of thinking. And I, I am definitely not, to use religious terms, I'm definitely not an atheist when it comes to this. I, I'm, is it agnostic if you're actively engaged with it, but you don't know? Or Yeah, so the agnostic would say that he doesn't know if there's a God or not, but generally doesn't believe in what we would call the supernatural. Oh, well, then now, I'm not agnostic. Somebody, somebody who believes in the supernatural, but doesn't necessarily believe in one creator God, or maybe doesn't believe in many gods, like the ancient Greeks, that would not be an agnostic, right? You might be agnostic with regards to the Abrahamic gods or to the gods of the Greeks, but you still would believe in things like maybe spirits, or like think of like a totemism or animism, right? They don't believe in personal deities per se, but there's these animating spirits in nature. So they would, they would still be some sort of uh, spiritualist. So in any case, um, I don't know what I think about something animating the, uh, not animating is the wrong word, something behind some, some malevolent force behind so much of what we see, but I am not, I am absolutely positively not, uh, I don't know if I believe, certainly I'm not close to the possibility. So I'm, I'm done. So you, you go ahead and give your introduction now. No, yeah, sure. And I, I like your, your angle of parasites and we're going to return to that, but I want to put a bookmark in that and sort of just briefly relay the foundation. So when we had our last discussion, you were talking about how it's very short sighted and self-destructive of humans to, to do all these things to the environment that we're living in. And you, you made an appeal to things like, well, humans are selfish. Humans are short sighted. Humans are, uh, you know, contentious. And, and I thought to myself, well, Okay, if you have like a family relative who's constantly in debt, an alcoholic, and in trouble with the law, that might be a useful explanation for why he is the way he is. Because the explanation is commensurate with the effect. But when we have something so massive, this global attack, if you will, on organic life itself, it would look like, that seems to be an explanation that doesn't fit the result. Because the result is so massive, so catastrophic. You, what I'm thinking is there has to be something. The intuition I'm using is that any explanation needs to be consistent with the effect, which is called the principle of sufficient reason. So if you have an effect, you need to have an explanation that's sufficient to explain it. So you wouldn't say, for example, you know, if somebody started a war, you wouldn't then say, well, you know, this war was started not because you know the dictator ordered you to invade another country, but because, you know, some some small border skirmish, right? It's like the border skirmish might have had a part in it, right? But the actual like impetus to go to war was the result of a higher order decision by the dictator, for example, or George W. Bush in the case of Iraq. The idea being that you need to have a explanation that is commensurate with the effect. So let's look at the machine. And by the machine, I mean the entire integrated system of technology globally. I would argue that, one, it is so vast that no one human intellect or a collection of human intellects could even understand it. It's, it's literally too vast to be understood by a human intelligence or a collection of human intelligences, both in its creation and certainly in its current manifestation. But looking back in time, we can see that it has been developing towards some, it's, it's been directed, right? It's unfolding of the technological society has been directed in an intelligent fashion, but the intelligence I do not believe could be human because no human intelligence can even comprehend the full process, right? Cause we're not just talking now about the process as it's occurring today. We're talking about the process as it's been occurring for the last 200 years 
following a certain order that it's culminating to a certain point, whatever that point is, which we, we don't really know yet, but I think some people have guesses. So then the question is, okay, it, it seems to be directed in some intelligent fashion, but the intelligence seems to be of a kind that a human intelligence is not sufficient to explain it. Now, in, in, in a totally other, well, not totally unrelated, so J. Allen Hynek, who was a part of Project Blue Book, the U.S. investigation of the 1952 UFO sightings over Washington, D.C., along with uh, the French uh, I think computer scientist Jacques Vallée, came up with the idea that the best explanation for UFO sightings is not extraterrestrials, but what they call extra-dimensional intelligences. And then Jacques Vallée has also done research indicating that you know ancient pagan mythology of the gods and then medieval mythology of like gnomes and sprites and elves, and then modern day abduction narratives all follow a similar pattern. And he then concludes that this pattern is in a interdimensional intelligence that react that reaches out to people at the level they can understand. So they they use culturally appropriate manifestations to reach out to people and direct them. Now I think that Heineck and Valet have made a very good case for this. And they're coming at this from like secular scholars, you know, they're not religious per se. They're not a part of any faith tradition that I'm aware of. They're just looking at, you know, how do we explain this evidence? Because remember, Heineck was brought on by the U.S. government to help investigate these sightings. And in light of what they're saying now about UFOs, it's kind of interesting that Heineck was treated so poorly in the 50s. So the point is, though, we have a sort of working model for a super intelligence that's non-corporeal that interacts with humans over millennia of which, you know, now in, in the modern West, they have to appear high tech because otherwise we wouldn't pay any attention, you know, appearing as an elf or a Olympian God wouldn't work anymore. And so one thing that they notice that Valet notices is, is that all of these manifestations seek to transgress the limits and the norms of the age in which they appear. Okay. So, what does technology allow people to do? It allows them to, well, it apparently allows them to transcend natural limits. Now, ultimately, if you believe in collapse and peak oil and things like you and I have discussed, you can't actually transgress those limits forever, but it creates the illusion. So well, the you, can, you can actually transgress them for a while, but in so doing, you permanently reduce carrying capacity. Yeah. You, you don't apparently transgress the limits. You actually do. It's just that transgression is, is is limited in time. Well, there's a hidden cost. Yeah. And so uh, given what, what they've just, uh, outlined in their own works, this uh, attempt to push the limits with modern technology seems eminently consistent with this insight because it's saying, well, look, if you just buy into this technology, you can continue to push limits beyond which... Uh, you wanted before. And furthermore, you know, not that I have to convince you, but the overall course this process has been taking has been deleterious. And whatever intelligence is behind it is clearly malevolent because it's not serving anyone's, you know, positive interests in doing this. So then, you know, I would then conclude that, you know, okay, it's malevolent. Then what does it want? Well, I think in part, as I mentioned last time, what it wants is to create the, uh, the ego without limits. Now, I mean, in one sense, there are limits, right? We're sort of in padded cells in suburbia where we can't actually do much, but we can sort of indulge the ego as much as we want without any apparent cost. Whereas in any prior society, apparent costs would be immediately manifest. So whatever that looks like at the other side, it, it's sort of like, I would argue an occult ritual where, you create the conditions under which you can create a totally liberated ego, which, ha which is a complete sociopath. 